Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So what we're going to be talking about today are five reasons why I can't use Linux exclusively. Like I've said, I love Linux. It's something I really enjoy using. I'm a tinkerer, so to me, I like to be able to make tweaks and changes to the operating system, and it's somewhat of a challenge for me. Plus, it teaches me skills that I need to learn in the industry that uh, is really server-wise focused on Linux. So to me, it's awesome. Before we get started, I wanted to point out that I do have a Patreon web page. Now, I've had a link up in my end credits for a little while, but I wanted to point out, if you get a chance, stop by my page, patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets. My goal here is to raise a couple hundred dollars a month on top of the couple hundred dollars a month I'm making from YouTube advertising. And I want to be able to reduce my teaching load. I think I'm always going to be teaching because I really enjoy doing it. But I'd like to ultimately reduce my teaching load so that I can focus a little bit more on fast gadgets and get some more videos out for you and higher quality videos. So if you've watched any of my recent videos, you know that I've bought some new equipment. And I'm trying to get those videos out for you, and hopefully you're enjoying the content. So if you get a chance, stop by, pledge a buck, get me a cup of coffee, whatever you're interested in. All right, let's get right to it. So here's my top five reasons why I will never be able to use Linux exclusively. And I'm saying 100%. I would say at this point I am a... Hmm, I would say 70% user. Now, 30% of the time, I'm kind of forced to use Windows mainly for work purposes. And probably half of that time that I'm not using Linux, I'm using Mac. Lately, for the past three or four months, my Macs have sat around and collected dust because I've been focused on Linux and doing my editing in Linux. And when I do need another OS, it's usually Windows for school purposes. So that is number one. I need to be able to run some applications that just plain do better natively. One, for example, is Microsoft Access. Um, there are other applications that are similar. Many of the Adobe applications that I support in the courses I teach. Uh, VMware, and yes, I know I can install VMware in Linux, but the problem is the interface is slightly different. So I need to have, you know, uh, a homogenous interface with my students so they can see kind of one-on-one -on -one what I'm teaching them in VMware. Now, the cool thing, what I like to do, uh, a lot of the teaching that's taking place now, uh, of course, is lecture, but I put a lot of my content on Blackboard. So those tutorial videos that you might see, I create those also for my classes. So... When I'm teaching a class on VMware, for example, Workstation, say, I will do VMware Fusion in Mac. I will create a video for that. I will create a video for VMware in Linux, and I'll create a video for VMware Workstation in Windows so they can see all three of them. And then I'll make a different video for each one, setting up the virtual machine or whatever our assignment is for the day. Then what the students can do, if they come in, they say, hey, Mr. Evans, I have a Mac. Could I just use my Mac? I say, absolutely. I have a video created for it. Every week that we have an assignment, I will have a video on how to do it in the Mac, how to do it in Linux, and how to do it in Windows. And for me, I think it makes my skill set even better, and I can support all those different operating systems and the VMware versions for each of them. So I think it's a major plus in my personal opinion. But whatever the case, uh, Adobe Dreamweaver products, Photoshop, Premiere, you know as well as I do, these heavy hitter programs just run better natively. And so I'm always going to have to go back at some point or another to the native OS which is Windows. Number two. So the next question you'll probably want to ask, well, just do it in a virtual machine. And I have, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but if I boot up into Linux and I load a virtual machine with Windows on it, then start my screen capture software because I'm doing a lecture, you have to remember I'm doing all of this live right so to speak so 
doing it inside a virtual machine and the performance hit that it takes, just running the VM is usually not a problem, but doing the VM and doing the uh, video capture, at least in Linux, it really doesn't fly that well. And this is actually uh, one of the factors that I always consider. Now, if I boot into Windows 10, I can get away with it because I have all the hardware support that I need. So with Windows 10, I've got uh, the GPU support built into OBS. I've got uh, GPU support built into VMware or, well, not really VMware that much, uh, but VirtualBox, which I do in Linux as well. But really the big kicker is having that hardware support for OBS and at the same time for um, my virtual machine, okay? So processor-wise, it takes a lot less processing and the machine seems to run at a nice pace. Yes, I absolutely know that I can... Uh, configure OBS in Linux to work with my hardware. But I've had some other weird problems with OBS in Linux, one of which is if I use a USB mic, uh, the longer the video gets, what usually happens is the sound cuts out and the mic stops working almost as if the mic driver had a hiccup. And I don't know why it is, but I assume it's digital media. It has something to do with the fact that it's digital media. The entire audio track is missing. So I'm kind of stuck with figuring out either another audio, uh, which is what I usually do. I hook up the lavalier mic and plug it into my phone and use a recorder just to cover my butt, which several times in Linux I've had to use, okay? The hardware support just isn't there, and we all want to get the best performance out of our systems that we can. And when, you know, it's on the line and I'm doing a live lecture, unless it's you know, specifically Linux related, more than likely if I'm running a virtual machine and I'm running video capturing software, in that case I will use Windows or I'll go to a Mac because the OSs support the hardware so well. I'm not saying it's a bad thing on Linux, okay? I'm just saying that that's the facts and it's what works for me. So let's segue into number three. I think I've already talked about it a little bit. One of the big problems with hardware support, of course, is in order to get an application working correctly like OBS Studio, I unfortunately am stuck with having to compile FFmpeg and then I have to compile the uh, OBS Studio itself to use FFmpeg with support for the driver in Linux. Now, there is an Intel-based driver in Linux, but I probably would have to compile the Intel-based driver as well. I'm hoping I don't have to, but that's three separate drivers. And if anybody's done any source code compiling, you know that it can be a little bit like pulling teeth, which is an unfortunate thing, right? But usually you, the good thing about it is you get better performance. Unfortunately, um, it can be really tough. If you doubt me, check out Intel's documentation on compiling drivers for the Intel HD 620 series. And again, you may be great at doing this type of stuff. I'm okay. And, you know, I've done it many, many times. Um, I've compiled my own kernel. Uh, I've compiled other source code programs to run in Linux. And it's not like it's the end of the world, but you do run into problems. If you've got a new kernel installed and you reboot, there's a good chance your video driver isn't going to work, and I highly doubt the compile for FFmpeg and OBS would work. You'd probably have to recompile those. So if there's any component changes, you're going to have to do a recompile, and it can be very arduous. Number four. The tech industry still really focused on Microsoft products on Microsoft platforms. The one sole area as far as the IT industry goes is in server technology with Linux. So almost nobody runs Linux on their workstations because they want to. Usually they're running it as a development platform or they're running it because they basically want to learn server technology. That's, that's the IT industry, okay? So there's no real other reason to run Linux unless you want to. You have to want to. 
Is it harder than running Windows or running Mac? Oh yeah, absolutely. If anybody says no, then they haven't dug deep enough yet. My thinking is, and I love Linux, okay? There's problems that'll come up that you have to figure out, and, and that is the case for Windows too and sometimes Mac, but more so Linux than Windows or Mac. And, and again, that's my, my impression on things and my experience. So I did some updates on my Yoga 910 this morning. I rebooted and now KDE Plasma is really squirrely. So it was basically freezing and I was uploading a video for you guys and it was kind of touch and go. I'm sitting here watching, I'm thinking, well, I'm still uploading the video. I really hope it keeps working. I don't really want to do anything to upset the Apple cart. I could have re-hupped the entire graphical interface and everything and done all kinds of fancy stuff, but I didn't want to stop the video upload, which was 3.1 gigabytes and it was 70% done. So I just left it. I didn't touch it. And processing uh, plasma was running about 50%. So that's something I have to figure out. That's going to be a challenge that I have to figure out. I know I had problems with Windows 2. I released a video about the creator's update and how it did not go well on my Yoga 910. So it's not all a bed of roses when you go to Windows. I'm not saying that. But most of the time for the average user, Windows is where to go. And platform-wise, all that software, uh, server software 2012, 2016, 2008, Microsoft SQL, VMware, all the different Adobe products, Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, all these different components and pieces of software uh, that I support as an IT professional and I also support and have to understand as an instructor. So there, all these platforms are designed for Microsoft or the other very few are designed for Mac. But if you go to a school for an information technology degree, most of the time it's 70% Microsoft. And I actually disagree with that. I think that's a bad idea. I think students should learn to run Linux, should have to run a Linux desktop. Um, at least for a while so they get some experience with it and the content should be more Linux. One of the organizations I worked for uh, when I started as the IT manager we had one Linux server and we had about 10 different servers at the time. By the time I left that organization it was 95% Linux because the, the organization was a group of nonprofits and they really couldn't afford Maybe they could have, but they really couldn't afford some of the technology budget for uh, server products that were Windows-based. So we would do a very roll-your-own Linux-based system. They wanted a survey server. I said, no problem. I'm going to set up a virtual server in Linux that's sitting on top of my ESXi system that I installed for free on a piece of hardware. And I'm going to install Lime Survey inside that virtual machine with MySQL, and we are going to run this system. So I'm not saying everybody in the industry, in the IT industry, is exclusively running Linux products, but if you look at the training, and I don't know why it is, I can't say, I guess it's what the schools think is the demand, uh, they tend to go more towards Microsoft-oriented uh, technologies. Now there is a degree program one of the schools I teach for. Uh, it's called, I, I don't want to say it's called the open source program, that's not correct, but basically it's about 90% open source software. So it's really cool. I really like it uh, as far as a program goes, but you don't see many students taking it. So many of the campuses don't even bother to offer it because the students come in and they want a more traditional IT degree for better or for worse. And that's the facts. Now, number five might seem a little vain, but again, this is my opinion. Take it for what you will. But I really like tablet mode and tent mode in my laptop, and I've been using it more and more and more than I ever thought I would. Honestly, I kind of saw it as somewhat of a gimmick when I first bought it. Uh, the first laptop I had that would do tablet mode and tent mode and all that was kind of heavy, but this new one, the Yoga 910, really isn't that heavy and when I actually use it in tablet or tent mode it's very useful for me when I am teaching. Um, so I will walk around with it. I'll have the apps open that the students are using. I'll have whatever websites for support or whatever else we need open. I can take notes with it. 
Uh, I can type on the screen really quickly. I can show them things and say, no, 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 that's not right. Look here, look how I'm doing this here, and then show them right away. So it's really cool because I'm in this lecture, or I'm in the lab more importantly, and they need something and they want to know. I don't have to say, well, let me look at it and I'll get back with you. They are running a virtual machine. I'm running the virtual machine. They ask a question, I check now. I want to know now what the answer is. And then I can show them and say, no, this is, this is how you want to do it and then they get that feedback immediately and then they can carry on with the lab. So I have a problem in Linux with that because it's not supported. Um, the only software that supports it partially is GNOME and again GNOME has problems with 4K and 1080p. So those are my five reasons why I will never be a 100% Linux user. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do, like and subscribe. If you really enjoyed the video, think about dropping by my Patreon page and maybe give me a buck a month and see if I can't get to the point where I can make more videos of higher quality and get them out to you faster. Thank you as always. See you next time on Fast Gadgets.